had grown to 17,000 members. In 2002, Word of Faith had its 8th anniversary celebration. The church received its new name at the anniversary conference. God is changing our name. No more, we are the Word of Faith Church. From now on, we are the embassy of the blessed kingdom of God for all the nations. In 2002, Pastor Sunday preached in many countries. In the same year, the Transformation Business Center was also established. Now, more than 500 students attend the Academy for Business and Management established by the center. In 2002, some leaders of the Embassy of God began lecturing on the subject of healthy lifestyles to the students of Kiev high schools. They hold individual counseling sessions with the children, organize interest clubs, and hold teachers and parents meetings. The school ministry was established to teach young people to take responsibility, discover their purposes and to train a new generation which will live according to the principles of Christian morals. In May 2003, the Embassy of God and Love Rehabilitation Center held the third annual March of Life. About 35,000 believers from different denominations, together with key social services, marched through the streets of the city, announcing to the whole world that there is a way out of AIDS and drug addiction. In 2003, new Embassy of God churches were being planted in Kyiv and throughout Ukraine. At the 9th anniversary conference, Embassy of God missionaries from Russia, Belarus, USA, India, and the United Arab Emirates gathered together. In their messages, they shared their experiences with new missionaries who were to be sent to other countries and cities to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Several dozen engagements and weddings were a key highlight at the conference. All of this was for adults, but for the children, there were four days in the fairy tale country, located in the Palace of Sport, Faye. Rosa Children's Ministry has interesting Sunday schools, fascinating tours, puppet shows, and summer camps. My heart is thankful to God. I have received freedom from drug addiction. I love this house of God very much, especially Pastor Sunday. I feel love to the Lord, and I'm thankful to Him for what He has done for me. This is the motivation of my heart. Pastor Sunday Adelaide's visit to America in August brought unexpected results. The president of TBN, Dr. Paul Crouch, offered Pastor Sunday a weekly program broadcasting the Embassy of God on his channel. Since then, programs from the church have been broadcast in 100 countries of the world. Thanks to these programs, millions of people in Europe, Africa, and the United States have discovered Ukraine to be a democratic European country. God answers prayers. And in 2003, the believers of the Embassy of God were reassured that God does indeed answers prayers. They decided to stand up for the protection of the social moral condition through fervent prayer and action. National Deputy Lenny Chernovetsky, member of the Embassy of God, proposed a bill that would stop circulation of pornography and excessive violence in the mass media. We received the victory. On December 20th, the President of Ukraine signed the bill accepted by Parliament and it became part of the Protection of Social Morals Law. The 10th page of the Embassy of God's Family album has been turned. The church goes on. God is a God of action and we are turning a new page with Him. The Embassy of God will compel churches from all around the world to open their eyes and to wake up. We want the sleeping lion to wake up and we want all churches of the world to become an influential force in this society. We want the whole world to know what church is able to do when the power of God works in it.
On July 26 through 30, 2004, in the Pushavadica Resort near Kiev, more than 1,500 people gathered together for the Embassy of God's annual summer fast. Even such a large hall couldn't contain the crowd waiting to join the fast. Hello, my name is Asya, and I am 16. My name is Alexander Ivanyuta. I am a pastor from Vladivostok. My name is Lilia Shevchenko. I am the pastor of the Spring Church in Minsk, Belarus. I am from Hamburg, Germany. Is it worth it to come such a long distance to be here? Yes, it would be worth it to come from even further. This is the third time I have come here. I come every year for both the winter and summer fasts. 10,000 kilometers is not a long distance for such an event. We pay a lot of money for our flights, but once I'm here, I know that I would be ready to pay twice as much or even three times as much. I would pay it because God is priceless. I will get a breakthrough for my life here. Only here can you get such a concentration of God's presence. People came from different cities and countries, from the USA and Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan, Armenia and Bulgaria, and, of course, from Ukraine. All these people have come hundreds of thousands of kilometers just to seek the face of God together. Hello, dear church. My name is Natalie Gross. I came from the Embassy of God Church in Utrecht, Holland, with our youth group. We have come about 2,000 kilometers to be here. We want to fill ourselves with God and bring His holy presence to Holland to share with everyone. We are captured with the principles Pastor Sunday is using. We see more and more people in Holland consumed with this fire, and we want more. We don't want to live by just the books and head knowledge, but we want to get that spirit into our hearts. I like to see what the people here have. I like to see that they are ministering from the heart and see the smiles on their faces. You don't see people smiling on the streets, but they do here. I like the worship I see here. People are really using the principles Pastor Sunday received from the Lord, and I I would like to see the same thirsty spirit in our own town. Hello from Armenia. My name is Sergei Shitlovsky. I came from Boris, Belarus, and this is my first time here. I heard many good reports about these facts, and now I see they were all true. I'm amazed so many people are seeking God so desperately. It's just amazing. People came here from different countries of the world. And what's more amazing is that there are more ministers from abroad than from Ukraine itself. Surely God is here. It's a hot and muggy July afternoon. The people are looking for some shade closer to the center where God's presence is strongest. They left their homes and jobs and spent their money just to be here. In spite of the heat and tiredness, they are still praying for their countries. They have refused to live for themselves and have made a decision to do something for their countries and nations. Society and politicians will never see these prayers, but they are the invisible foundation on which the new Ukraine is being built. Our main task is to draw as near and as close to God as possible. We have to fill ourselves and be consumed with the revelation of who God is. The prayer is strengthening our spirits and drawing us nearer to God. When we go back home, we must see ourselves as deliverers. We have to be confident that we can save our city. We are able to do this and know what to do.
I have a concrete purpose. None of us have the right to leave this place without receiving a strategy from God for his life. We will start moving. We receive the grace, the power, the anointing, and the strategy to go for it. The main task of each one praying here is to find God, to discover God's strategies for his life. A deliverer can't allow himself to be ashamed. We must leave this place, first of all, as redeemers. We will solve the problems of the world. Those here during these 10 days will go back to their homes with the understanding that they are deliverers as economists, politicians, media workers, doctors, and so on. They are the ones who will bring a part of God to society. They will reform their countries because they have taken responsibility for the land around them. I see myself as a deliverer. I want the knees of this country, of this state, to bow down before God. We must have the highest possible determination and vision. If God is for you, who can be against you? People who live hundreds or even thousands of kilometers away were drawn to this camp. Each one has his own destiny. They are all different, but something is uniting them together. We are looking for God. This fast will help us to find the revelation of what is awaiting us. Though it may not be comfortable here, our main purpose is to seek God and His will. This is why we are here. My name is Yulia. I am pastor of the Embassy of God Church in Irpin, Ukraine. During this fast, we are making history in Ukraine. We have the chance to partake in this great revival. We are so filled with joy that we can share in this event. When we spend time with God, He gives us strength, assurance, and understanding of the new abilities inside us. This is how God manifests Himself here. When we go back home, I know God will use me in politics, and I will break free in every realm that God has placed me in. You won't get it anywhere else. You can't receive it just by listening to tapes. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I don't know any country in the world where Christians, twice a year, hold such prayer and fasting events. Usually, something like this is a one-time happening. But nowhere have I heard of someone doing it consistently. People from different countries are thirsty for God. They come here to learn how to do the same at home. Here we pray about 15 to 18 hours a day during the whole week. This is the real know-how which Ukraine is giving to the world. In February 1998, God gave the revelation to Pastor Sunday to organize Pastor's fast. A team of 40 people isolated themselves to pray and fast. They had no idea then that these fasts, twice a year, would gather many thousands of people to see God. Their purpose is to know God more closely in order to bring His light to others. Well, the eyes of many are on the church here in Kiev. And so as we've been here these uh, days praying and fasting, we understand why.
И поэтому, когда мы здесь находимся, в посте и в молитве, мы понимаем причину, по которой это происходит. The fire of God and the grace of God is being expressed here in a very tangible way. Огонь Божий и благодать Божья, они очень явно выражаются на этом месте. God started pouring out His mercy on this church, and it is easier to serve now. We expect big reformations to take place in our country. We want it to prosper politically and physically. I am amazed what God is doing here. We start with general prayer and end with very concrete words from God. This fact is very important and significant. I believe this will be a new step of grace for our country and the whole world. This is the culmination of what God is doing in Ukraine. All that we have today is due to such quest for God. This move that has started in Ukraine will never stop, and no one can quiet it. It is spreading throughout the entire world. Are you ready to be a deliverer of your nation? I learned what true fatherhood means. Fire, new fire. On October 5th and 6th, Embassy of God Church held the conference Men of the Highest Call. Thousands of men gathered together in Kiev in order to hear what God is speaking to them in the last days. What did you expect from this conference? Well, I don't know yet. I want to have depths of understanding of a man's role. I want to get something new, and I've been a believer for more than 10 years, and I really want to get something new from God. Personally, for myself, I expect new direction in my ministry and in my calling. To learn something new about God, about myself, and about people. Where are you from? From Belarusia, the city of Gomel. What do you expect from this conference? I expect men's ministry to grow, not just in Ukraine, but also in our country, in Belarusia. We expect God's blessings and a clear word from God. I expect changes as a man in order to grow in my ministry, in order to receive success from the Lord. Вообще-то вот эта мужская конференция была 
It was not my idea to hold this conference. This was an idea of our women pastors, especially of Natalia Patapayeva. They considered that they found in me something that differs in the way I relate toward women ministers and toward women in general. And they told me that the order that is in my family is supposed to be in the life of our men also. Because your family differs so much from all the others, they said. And we would like that all of our men would become as responsible as you and would relate to women as you do. shout, Jesus is Lord. You're watching the Embassy of God program. The man of a highest call is a man who is focused on God the Father and who knows that his highest calling as a man is to be a father. To be responsible not just for what is going on in his family, but also in his business and in society in general. This is the person that has Jesus as his ideal, God the Father as his ideal, and who imitates them in everything, in his conduct. If all men would be responsible for what they do and what character they have, and if they would be guided by the desire not to grieve God, by the desire to do what God would do in their place, then we would have a different society. Right from the time of Adam and Eve, from the time of the Garden of Eden, a loving father has been standing at the doorstep, waiting for the return of the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son is the story about God the Father, how he longs for sons returning, and how he is ready to pay any price, just that his sons would be redeemed, and that they could call him not just God, but dear Father, Abba Father. Give him the glory. You've returned back home. Now you have the Father. You have returned back home. That is why, friends, everybody who is like me, who has been brought up without a father, who has never seen his father, who was born outside of marriage, whose parents divorced, who had a father was, that was never at home, who had a daddy but he never took care of him like a son, 
A father who was drinking and was living a desolate life, even those who did not receive fatherhood from their own parents, biological fathers, to all of us it has been told, we have got another chance to have a father of fathers, the original father, the everlasting father, and to call him my father and by right to be his sons. Welcome. Fatherhood has been returned to you. You are his son again. Same. Amen. When I received the invitation for the men's conference, in spite of the fact that my schedule was packed, I gave my agreement because I see the reality and necessity in these kinds of conferences. Our men truly need a serious breakthrough. I see how your families suffer, how nations suffer. I want to change this system. Friends, this men's conference is a special event of the last days because God wants to get through to fathers. And if fathers will understand the will of God, it will change the order in the family, in the church, in business, and in every aspect of our life. If you understood, give him praise. Brothers and sisters, are you with me? We are first. We are the church of firstborns. We do not have seconds.